morning. Welcome to Summerside Church Online. Today we're here to worship God. We're also here to connect with one another. So we have this chat feature that we invite you to use, engage with, ask questions, say hi, let us know you're here, especially if you're new. We would love to engage with you and chat with you because we are a family at Summerside. Today, I invite you to engage with the worship service as much as you can where you are. And I'm going to start by reading a psalm. This is Psalm 103, an invitation to praise the Lord. So would you join me in praising the Lord as we read and get into worship this morning? Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all our sins and heals all our, your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us as we worship. <laughs>
Christ alone my hope is found He's my life, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Float through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of pastor at Summerside, and I'll tell you what, we have a ton of ground to cover today, so we're going to jump right in. Here's what I'm going to ask of you. Let God's Word be your authority. Let God's Word be your guide. Don't let tradition or culture or experiences form and shape you to such a degree that you ignore what the Bible teaches. Because today we're talking about something that is incredibly misunderstood, that is misapplied in our culture, something that we naturally have a resistance to. But we're going to see that God has a vision, God has a purpose in what he commands his people, and that this will bring about our joy and our hope. So my challenge for you as we read this passage is to, you know, first of all, don't get mad at me until I'm done. Don't check out just because you don't like a few of the words that the Bible uses. 
but to think deeply on what the Bible's teaching and why it teaches that. Before you dismiss the Bible, make sure you understand what it's actually saying. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about gender, marriage, husbands and wives, and the role of submission in marriage. Now, I recognize that this is complex, that this is tricky. This is a one-off sermon. There is more that could be said. But today, what I want to do is offer you the principles that the Bible teaches so that you can then begin to work out the pragmatics or the details or the applications of this in your community groups, in your marriages, and those uh, in, in your friend circles. So if you have your Bibles, open them up to Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 18 and 19. Here's what it says. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. And husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Now, here's my first point. Okay. This is in the Bible. So, if you call yourself a Christian, you have to engage with this. You don't want to be the type of person who comes to God's word with a sharpie in hand and just begins to score out everything that you don't already believe, right? Because then you're not allowing God to conform you into his image, the image of his son, but you're asking God to conform to your image. And what you're doing is you're doing exactly what Adam and Eve have done, setting yourself up as God thinking that you know better than your creator. See, we don't come to God in that way. He doesn't leave that option open for us. We submit to him, we submit to his word, because he is our maker and he knows best. So when you see a difficult passage like this in the Bible, it's important to not dismiss it. It's important to understand it. Now, whenever we deal with a complex or a, a difficult topic, it is important to get the big picture, and that's what we're going to do today. So here's kind of my, my first point here on this passage as we have it, is that Paul is here and he's talking to wives and he says something that is very controversial for us today, but is actually taught a number of times in the New Testament. We Wives are called to submit to their husbands, and it's right here in this text, and we see the same thing in Ephesians chapter 5. So Ephesians 5, to 24 says this, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. The same thing is taught in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, and similar themes come up in 1 Timothy and in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So here's my point. The New Testament teaches this. Now, I know how this feels for some of you, or I should say I can only imagine how this feels. Because you've seen this teaching abused. Maybe you've had domineering partners, people who are threatened by you or have misrepresented this biblical teaching and you've seen that happen time and time again. Maybe, maybe you've experienced misogyny. Maybe you've been dismissed because of your gender. And I'm truly sorry for that. But here's the thing. Don't dismiss something simply because you've seen it be abused. Right? Don't dismiss something simply because you've seen it abused. Now, Let's get into this teaching, okay? There's three important clarifications, if you're taking notes, right, that I think are important around this word submission. Three important clarifications. Here's the first one. You cannot escape submission. You can't avoid it, right? Even if you really resist this teaching, if you're sitting here saying, there is no way, come hell or high water, that I'm going to submit to my husband. No way. Well, if you want to be a Christian, you're still going to have to submit. We're told in 1 Peter chapter 2 that we are called to submit to the government. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, we're told that we are called to submit to the elders of the church. We're called to submit to our bosses at work, to submit to one another. 
You can't escape this reality. In fact, the word used here is the same word used of Jesus in his relationship with his parents when he was here on earth. So ultimately, we're called to submit to Christ as Lord, so you can't escape submission. Even if you ignore this verse, we're still called to live lives that incorporate or that, that have submission as part of its very fabric. So you can't escape submission. That's the first point I think is important. Here's the second one. You have to understand the term biblically, right? Right? To understand something, you have to understand the, the meaning of the word. So, wives are called to submit to their husbands, and what does this actually mean? And this right here is where people go wrong on both sides. So let's correct the errors and get in line with the Bible. So what submission is not? Submission is not and never has been that the husband is the boss and the wife just follows along. The husband comes home, puts up his feet, and the wife quietly shuffles around, waiting for his commands to bring him a drink or a sandwich. Submission is not that the husband makes the choices and the wife just nods. Submission is not that the wife doesn't get a say, have input, or isn't allowed to have strong opinions. It doesn't mean that the husband is smarter, more gifted, or a better leader, and has nothing to do with ability. You see, submission does not imply inferiority or even a lack of some sorts. It has nothing to do with intelligence, leadership, gifts, or men just being better. It does not mean that men are more spiritual or have more spiritual insight. Right? Paul in the book of Galatians explains that because of what Christ has done, he has created one new humanity. That it doesn't matter if you're male or female, if you're Jew or you're Gentile, we are one in Christ and have equal access to God the Father through Christ by the Spirit. So, if a, and, and ultimately, it's important to recognize that both husband and wife are called to submit to Christ as king. So, in the event that a husband is trying to lead his family in a direction that dishonors God, the wife's primary responsibility is to Jesus as her Savior and as Lord. So that's what submission is not, okay? So what is it then? Well, in marriage, biblical submission is a wife's choice to not overtly resist her husband's leadership. It's a wife's recognition and her being comfortable with God's command for husbands to lead their wives and lead their families. And that they would do this, husbands, like Jesus. So, wives, if you think that submission is just such a difficult cross to bear, wait till I talk about what God expects of men. Okay? Now, the final point on this I think that's important to, to clarify is that a wife is called to submit to her husband, not to men. Okay? This is important. Right? If you're a dude who goes to this church, my wife does not submit to you. Right? Good luck trying to make her. Right? No, wives are called to submit to their own husbands. So this isn't just a, a general principle where men are up here and women are down here. No, we are one in Christ. And in the context of marriage, God calls for husbands to lead and for wives to submit to their husbands. For wives to not overtly resist their husband's calling of leadership in the home. Now, oftentimes Heather and I will, in our premarital counseling or marriage counseling, we'll talk to people about this concept. And we'll explain a little bit about what this actually looks like day to day in our marriage. And we try to just give a snapshot. But I'm always careful to say this is not what biblical submission looks like and only this. Why? Because every relationship is different. Because every relationship has different people involved. We're unique, each of us, in our own way, with our own backgrounds, with our own gifts and abilities. And so every marriage is going to work this out in a different way. But the principles that we've talked about continue to apply. So here's an example, okay? Heather cooks because I can't. But I clean up after supper. I do the banking, she does the groceries. I keep the car running and clean, she keeps the kids clothed. I, for some reason, really enjoy cleaning bathrooms and vacuuming. 
Maybe it's because there's like a clear before and after. Um, but we have different things that we just kind of gravitate to around the house. I have never once in my marriage, and I do not recommend it, settling some dispute with the words, I am the head of this household. Like that would never enter into our family's rhythms or into our relationship. So man, if you're married to a lady who's a mechanic, you just let her handle the car stuff, right? It's not about these archaic gender stereotypes. It's actually much deeper than that. It's not that a wife cooks and cleans and the husband just provides and, and we just revert back to, you know, the 1930s or something like that. It's much deeper than that. Every relationship and every couple is going to work this out differently, but the, the principles apply. And biblical submission is a wife's honoring of her husband and recognizing his call to lead. To not fight against it, to not resist it overtly, to not undercut it, and to mock his attempts to lead like Jesus. So wives, let me just talk to the men here for a minute. And please, you know, I see this sometimes on Sundays, just avoid the old elbow into the ribs of the husband, right? Hopefully he's already paying attention. Uh, you don't need to poke him a few times to wake him up. But ladies, we'll come back to you soon. But men, I want to offer you this verse again from Ephesians chapter 5. Paul says this, The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself his savior. Now, if you stop reading men at the end of the first clause, the husband is the head of the wife, Wow, man, look at that. Isn't that great? I can put my feet up. I can rest. I can take my foot off the gas. I can kind of be a little bit more passive and just kind of, you know, relax and get my way around the house. If you stop there, you're setting your marriage up for failure because the verse continues. Husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. So what this means is that the husband is called to lead his wife the way that Jesus leads his church. What kind of headship or what kind of leadership did Jesus offer the church? Was it harsh or loving? Was it domineering or was it gentle? Was it proud or was it humble? Christ loved the church so much that he never hurt her, never used her, never manipulated her. He loved the church so much that he was really willing to give his life to rescue her. And this is the image of leadership, of headship in the home that husbands are called to model. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its savior. In Colossians chapter 3, the exact same thing. Man, you can't stop reading after verse 18. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. And just kind of close the Bible right there. No, verse 19 offers a word to husbands. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. So, it starts with love and gentleness in the home. Love and gentleness. Now, men, I hate to even say this, but I, I want to be absolutely clear. There is no place in marriage for things like name-calling, constant shouting, manipulation, dismissive, snide remarks. And there is absolutely no place in marriage for physical or emotional abuse. Don't touch God's daughters in anger. And if you have done this in the past, you need to repent and find some help. And wives, if you live with a man who is violent, who is abusive, find help quick. It's not glorifying God to stay in a situation in which you are being abused. I hate to even say that, but it is so significant because God calls husbands to lead in the home with love and with gentleness. So what does this actually mean? That male leadership, that the, the headship of a husband is called to, to model the leadership and the headship of Jesus. Well, 
Man, what this means is that it's your job to make sure that your family is praying. It's your job to make sure that your family is honoring Jesus as Lord to the best of its ability. It's your job to lead in prayer for your kids, to be active in the discipline. Husbands, it's your job to take responsibility for the tone and the temperature of your marriage. How is your intimacy? How is your communication? How is your time together? Those are your responsibilities to initiate, to review, and to keep an eye on. Is your marriage a place of gentleness, forgiveness, compassion, and mercy? It's your job, husbands, to initiate conversation, couples therapy, if that's what you need in this season, to care for your wife like Jesus cares for the church. And what this means is you invest in your marriage, men, 100%, because God will hold you accountable for the way in which you lead your wife and you lead your family. What this means, men, is that if you're sitting there at night and somebody needs to get up off the couch to serve the family, you lead in that. What this means, men, if somebody needs to apologize first because you've had one of those fights or those tiffs that you don't even know what it's about or who started it, men, you're called to lead and to initiate this. If somebody needs to die to self and give up a hobby so that the family can have time together, Men, it's your responsibility. And wives, the question that I would have for you is, would you not want to submit to a man like this? A man who leads his family like Jesus, who is loving and gentle and sacrifices for you. You know, husbands are called to to love their wives and not be harsh with them. Love and gentleness. You know, husbands, lead in your home by leading in love and in gentleness. Words, in your actions, in touches of affection, in romance, flowers, in laughter, in texting. However your wife likes to be loved, love her well in that way. What this means is you are completely committed to loving and being gentle with your own wife. This means you're not looking for love elsewhere. Not from another lady, not from another dude, not from people online, not from porn. That you are committed heart and soul to your wife because you are leading her like Jesus. Jesus has his eye exclusively on his bride. He's not looking around at other options or playing the field. You know, you can't work, men, every day, every hour of every day and love love your wife well. I mean, there may be seasons that are busy, but I challenge you, men, ask your wife, how are you doing at loving her and being gentle in your marriage? So that's God's command for men of what it looks like to to lead well in the home. My question for you, the wives that are watching, would be this. Do you really want a man that doesn't lead? Do you really want a passive husband? No, because that's not a man. That's a boy. And you don't want to be his mom because that's exhausting. Wives, imagine the situation. You're home asleep and you hear a noise at night and you wake your husband up and you hear it again. And it's a little bit scary. And your husband looks at you. He pulls the covers up. And he says, babe, you have to go downstairs because I am terrified and I will not be able to sleep. Let me know if there's a problem. Like, is that the kind of man that you want? No, God calls men to lead in the home. And so if somebody's going to go down, it's going to be me, right? To lead, to sacrifice, to serve, to protect. Husbands, you are called to love your wife with gentleness, to lead like Jesus, with selflessness, with tender care and compassion, with joy and with laughter, and with a real sense of a seriousness of your calling. What this means is some of you have to get off your butt and repent because you've been passive, you've been selfish, you've been checked out. And if that's you, you are not honoring and glorifying God and you are not loving your wife like God has commanded you. 
You're sinning against your wife. You're sinning against your children. And you're sinning by God, against God himself by ignoring your responsibility. So, wives, as your husband steps out and he's trying hard to, to honor God and to lead and to initiate and to serve the family, submission largely means encouraging him as he steps out in that endeavor. To not undercut him or to mock him or to roll your eyes when he's trying his best. To support him and encourage him in that. Now, there are tons of things that could be said here about what this looks like in practice, in practice in marriage. And I know that I've not had the time to walk through all the illustrations, but I'll say this. If you have questions about this or you want to dialogue through it, Heather and I would love to talk to you about it, right? So you can reach out, send the office an email, and we'll kind of get that conversation started. There's a number of other things in this passage we'll continue to, to study and to learn, but let me conclude with this. You know, Summerside, there's no doubt that our world misunderstands marriage. That our world struggles in this department. Imagine the difference, imagine the witness that we would have if our marriages were truly places of selfless, selfless leadership, of service, of love, and of gentleness. What a powerful witness for the gospel that would be. And maybe your marriage in the past has been less than a source of joy. That doesn't mean that the future has to continue on like that. This, like every issue that we talk about at Summerside, comes back to the gospel. You will never understand submission and leadership in marriage until you understand the gospel. Jesus loved his bride and did everything necessary to rescue her and to save her. This is our image of marriage and the one that we follow. Let me pray to that end. Father, I confess in my own marriage times that I have not been gentle, times that I have not been loving, that I have been selfish. And I pray your forgiveness for that. I pray now for the marriages of Summerside, that you would help us to glorify you, to honor you, that we would trust your design for marriage instead of trusting what we feel or what our culture tells us. We love you and we take all of this from the gospel that is given to us in Christ our Lord. Amen.
my debt is paid, it is painful by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. When the sun sets free, oh, it's free in me. Now my sin is paid, it is paid in full. By the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. And my Jesus spilled. has no hold on me. When the sun sets free, oh, it's free. The stone is rolled away. Behold the empty tomb. Hallelujah, God be praised. He's risen from the grave. Living within us, never to fail or An unending promise, heaven inside us, whispers the sound of. Coming alive in you. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions or you want to talk further about what you've heard today in the sermon, you can use the chat, use the live prayer button. You can also email and call the church. We want to continue that conversation. Another way that you can engage and continue to go deeper in any topic that we talk about at church is through community groups. This is how we dig deeper and engage with questions and application that we have from the sermon. So make sure you get involved with the community group so that you can do that. Even if it's online or if it's at someone's house, we can make it work for you. So check that out using the Church Center app. I'm gonna close with a benediction from Revelations chapter seven. This is verse 12. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.